Oh. And good afternoon and welcome to Sense Making Conversations. My name is Andrea Sampson, and I'll be your host and guide as we delve deeply into the issues that are impacting us all. How are you feeling? Many of you know, I live here in Toronto. And we've been in some form of lockdown since November of 2020. And actually just a couple of weeks ago in early April, our provincial government announced a state of emergency with the lockdown in, in with a full lockdown province-wide. It's made it pretty challenging for many of us. I mean, I'm a social person. I love to be in community. And for the past 14 months, it just has not been possible. And yet the need for this type of connection is only growing. So many of us are feeling the need for connection to be amongst our peeps, to have those deep, meaningful conversations that shift us both personally, but also in our business. The lack of in-person connections drove me to begin investigating online communities, communities that mirrored where I am right now, but also showed me where I could be with some help and support. And I'm not alone. You know, according to Higher Logic, a company that manages online communities, 40% of their community owners reported that they've accelerated or significantly accelerated their community programs as a result of COVID. And for those who participate in those online communities, they report feeling being seen 57% of the time and heard 63% of the time. They're able to ask questions and actually get the answers they seek. This is invaluable at a time when we are challenged by loneliness and isolation and a mental health crisis that's impacting many. And this is why I am so excited to welcome Marusha Murphy, community expert and an amazing human. Marusha is an expert in seeing and hearing others and is known as the community maven for her ability to turn online communities into six and seven figure revenue streams. She's a community architect and an instigator for hundreds of change maker communities in a way that blends the good of people, purpose and profit into one another. And she's developed dozens of brands that turn communities from flailing into fierce. In addition to running her community architecture and culture building consultancy, that's a mouthful. She is also the founder of Perky Perky Coffee. And she brought Perky Perky to the United Nations in 2019 and served Perky Perky to over 400 transformational world and business leaders. The United Nations identified Perky Perky as one of the 10 women-owned brands to be on the watch out for in 2020. Marusha, welcome. I am so excited. Andrea, thank you so much for having me here. And hello, everyone that's here with us today. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. Great. Now, you know, Marisha, you and I, um, we had a bit of a pre-call and we started talking. One of the things that happens, and I find this happens a lot, is when we're, we're looking at something that we think we all know, community. Mm -hmm. And pretty quickly, we start to have different you know, sort of ideas of what a community is. And it's one of those words that we all know, but we have just that slightly different idea. So I would love it if you could share your definition of community. Sure, sure. I think that's a great way to get us started today because truthfully, I think, you know, while yes, I've been running communities for over 22 years, both face-to-face -face and online, and developing them into, into you know, profit centers for many different brands, um, the biggest question I get and the biggest concern I have in, in the word community becoming more of a buzzword these days is that people are starting to lose the value of what community actually is. 
So I think starting this way is actually very perfect. Um, but to answer it well, I really want to distinguish between what a community is and what an audience is, because I think those are the two words that often get interchanged for one another. And if we can all be on the same page on what they are, we'll have a better understanding and expectation of what we can create because of community. So an audience uh, is a what I call a one-way dialogue, right? It starts, and, and oftentimes those of us who are thought leaders or experts come from this place of, I have a message. I have something I wanna bring to the world. I have something that I wanna share. And we have now platforms like this one, right? So right now you audience member to me are, are an audience. Right, you are somebody that's watching. It's a one-way dialogue, where you're hearing from me and you're learning from me. But it is just that it's one-way communication. And now, from that, you're going to create awareness. You're going to get some education, and then you're going to say, "Huh, I want to continue to work with Marusha or get to know Marusha," or or you're going to say, "No, I'm good. It's okay." Right, and that's all yeah. of those are fine. Yeah. All of those are fine. But it's just nice to know what that is, right? With that being said, it's really also then important to know how that distinguishes uh, from a community. And in my, my vernacular, the way I define a community is that it is a, uh, it is a space where people are coming together. I like, to, I like to envision us as if we're in a container together, whether it's a, an event that we attend and we have a community because of that, or it's a Facebook group or a LinkedIn group or your own community that's based online or face-to-face, -face, whichever, but it's based on an interest or a passion or some purpose, some reason for being together because we're all into that thing, right? And the other piece to this is that it's a multi-directional conversation. So it's not just me con conversing with you, it's me and Andrea having a conversation with one another, having almost like a virtual tea or, or going, you know, meeting in person. And then, and then you come into the conversation and now it's a three way conversation. And then we have seven different levels of conversation. Yeah. Happening because we're all in this like juicy goodness of like yeah. fun because we're sparking because all of us are in each other space. Well, that is community. You know, and I think, I, I, you know, when you talk about a container, like I love that idea, right? Community is a container and it's a container for the things we share, right? We have, we have shared values, maybe. Um, yeah. Maybe there's some value that we're bringing to, to that group. Um, so we have our values of what we believe and what we, what we inherently hold close to our heart. But then our voices, you know, I mentioned earlier that people feel seen and heard. We bring value to others. And I think that's what's so powerful about these online communities. If I think about, you know, our live communities, the communities that maybe we've always been a part of, our community could be our family. It could be, you know, a, a group that we've been getting together with for many years. But those communities, because they're live and real, we tend to, um, the, the container isn't quite as tight or as defined, whereas online communities have the ability to really give us a very tight container that allows us to show up as yes. all of who we are. And I think that's really, really powerful. Now, I think the other thing that I think is really interesting about that uh, container, as you mentioned it, is that... Um, is that you know we come into it with a certain level of trust right so i come into a community and i show up as all of me because i trust that this community will hold that but sometimes communities start to shift and change who they are and how they interact with you what happens when that when that you know like how does that happen and why does that happen and you're a community architect so how do you make sure that the members are not feeling violated as a result of a shift? Such good question. Ah, I love it. Yes. So there's so much, there's so much there, right? And, and, and I think of it here, here's kind of an analogy that I utilize just so that we can kind of really bridge this from our conversation with audience and community versus community. And then how, how do you shift from the way in which I see it is oftentimes like a recipe, right? An audience is like hearing uh, the chef Gordon Ramsay or someone, you know, share the recipe. Rachel Ray, here's the recipe enjoy, right? But then the community is the soup, 
right? It's the soup where all the different ingredients come in to make something amazingly and spicy. Now, imagine then something shifts. Let's say the visionary of the group says, you know what? I'm really shifting within myself. The message feels a little bit, oh, something has to kind of, something's rumbling and I need to shift. And I've done this, right? It's almost like adding another ingredient into the pot. <laughs> if you wish, if you wish, you know what I mean? So like if, so instead of it turning into like a gazpacho um, soup, maybe you're adding in just a little bit of extra something, something, and now it's a whole different type of a soup and right. you heat it. Now it's, now it's like a warm soup, not a cold soup, right? Just even little things like that. It is about um, inviting those, the, the nuances to make it, to make it your own. There are though, to be, to be really honest, something that I find that when, when thought leaders really choose to develop their community and, and as they're, you know, I, I think sometimes, let me, there's one thing I do want to say on that note as well. Oftentimes thought leaders, we are in our creation a lot. We're here, right? Absolutely. And because of that, our thoughts morph over time. A question I often get is what if what if I've built a whole community around, let's say women's empowerment, but then I want to get more specific right now. I want it to be women's empowerment, uh, entrepreneurial empowerment. Right. And that mat, that is a massive shift. It's not just adding a word into what it is that you're doing. It's really shifting. So the thing that, that I like to do is I like to actually lean into what I call our four V's right. And values is definitely a part of that right? Your values have to be so defined to be able to not only uh, lean into that conversation and, uh, and be able to be present through your values experience, but also be able to communicate those values so that everybody is on board. And when we get to do that, we build community from that space. Like for example, in my community, one of my communities that I run right now is called Grow and Monetize Your Groups for Changemakers, right? And the, the three core values that we hold in there are love, bravery, and adventure. Mm, love, oh, wow. bravery, that one. and adventure. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's the thing. It's like people are like, well, how, how, Marcia, how does a group about monetizing your groups and growing and monetizing your groups, how in the world does that have to do with love, bravery, and adventure? Well, it's because I really chose to be intentional about this group. It's not just to be, oh, I'm just going to talk like, you know, and just like throw things at my people like most groups do. And that's part of why they don't thrive. But what I do instead is I really bring in and realize every single person that chooses to be in there has a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And I love heartbeats. I love people. And I want them to know that they are welcomed here, that they are loved, that all questions are important and who they are and what their passions are, are important. Bravery shows up in the way I also show up. Sometimes I'll share my, I'll open up my kimono, if you will, and (laughs) share something that feels really vulnerable in my own development, my growth. Why do I do that? Because I want to invite modeling of that as well. I want to invite my community to model that, to know that this is a space to be vulnerable, that we don't have to have all the answers as leaders and thought leaders, right? Like we don't have to, but we can still grow in the, in the process. Mm-hmm. An adventure for me is an opportunity for us to show up anyway, because when we do show up anyway, in the fear or in, or in the nervousness, we are open to, we become open to what's, what else is possible. And it's often the, it's often the, what's possible that really is the, the fun in the journey, not always the end destination. Right. So I bring those pieces in as I encourage you to bring those into your community, your values, but also your vision. Like, what is it? The second V is your vision. What is it that you want to imagine can happen because this community is together, right? So, in one of my builds, um, my my uh, vi- the co the the co partner with me in that was a visionary by the name of Ryan Moran, and Ryan had this vision to build businesses faster by bringing influencers, uh, e-commerce brands and investors into the same room because he knew those three circles were having their own private siloed conversations. But what if we could bring them all into the same space, both face-to-face and online and bring business together faster and grow these companies much faster. So we did. So we we had to lean with that vision to be able to, to launch this massive incubator that turned into six and a half million dollars in just two years. Right. 
So from there, so values, vision, then we go into our voice. There is no one like you. And I know Andrea's magic when it comes to helping us really identify our voice and really lean into the, our voice. And I think it's, it's really inviting those three core pieces, those three V's into that final V, which is our value. And the value, not just necessarily um, the offer, right? Or how, what, what is it that we're gonna be connecting our community to a sale on the back end? But also what you're selling, what are you, what I always say is what are you selling really? A lot of times we think we're selling a widget, but really we're selling an experience. And what is the experience that we're really crafting? That, that's the juice. That's, that's the thing that's going to make your soup <laughs> or your community home really come to life and not just be another, another one that goes yeah. by the way. I love what you're saying here. So we've got values, vision, voice, and value. And yes. so what you've done, at least as I hear it, is that you're creating intentional communities that have um, expectations. So as I, as a person who may enter that community, I know up front that these are the things that are going to happen. And I, there may be an offer given to me, but I don't have to come only for that. I could come simply for the connection for love, bravery, and adventure, because maybe that's what resonates with me. And maybe along the line, along the way, there might be something else that I get of value from that. So setting up that container very intentionally is important. Now, how do you go through, how do you do that though? So like, because I mean, I think so many people want to build communities. Actually, um, I think we have a question. Maybe this is the time for our poll question because I know you had asked. Yeah, so um, Madison, who is in the background, can you put our poll up? How many of you here have online communities? And so I think, I don't know where it's going. There it is. So go ahead, we'll continue to talk. Please answer it. We would love to know how many of you here have online communities. But, you know, if we're building these communities, how, how do we go about building those communities? Looks like actually many of our, uh, of our participants do have them. Wonderful. Wonderful. I love that. I love that you have communities. Um, and, you know, for those who might be watching and that are in the middle of like discerning whether or not they want to create a community, they've heard about this thing, like we can create a community, but it seems like a lot of work. Um, I get it. I get it. I think that um, I, I always say we always, when I do a build, a lot of my clients are like, okay, let's just go, let's just go. So what should I name my Facebook group? Right. Or what should I name my blah, blah, blah. And they, that's always the first question I get asked, or how do I get into engagement? Like I need to get engagement like now, like now. And I always say, let's go slow. Let's start slow to go fast. Right. We're going to slow down to answer those four V's first always and, and for and forever I will say that because I know that as visionaries we are we want to move fast typically towards that vision and see it happen and come alive but if we don't align ourselves with those things oftentimes what we're going to find is that we are just flinging strategy after strategy to something and we don't have intention around it right so we want to make sure that we're really 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 strategic so that we're making the most of our time we have a higher return on our investment for the work that we're going to be putting in. Um, and, and that it feels really aligned with what a community actually can do for your, for your brand and for, and for your message. Right. So what was the, how, what were, how did the poll um, come out? Yes. So it, I mean, if we look at this, so seven, over 70% either have a community or want, would like to create one. Nice. Uh, so, you know, I think we've got the right group here in terms of talking about this, you know, for those of, of you who have a community, um, you know, almost 60% of you already do tell us, um, what are you doing to build the intentionality around your community? Because I think what Marusha has just shared with us is really, really valuable, you know, creating that intentional community. So go ahead and share that in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. And again, remember, you can always either raise your hand 
or ask a question in the chat or the Q&A and we'll, um, we'll make sure that we answer that question or actually bring you on stage with Marusha and I so you can ask it directly to her. So Marusha, just getting back to that, how do you build that community? You bring them in, you know, I think there's an element of getting to know you, liking you and trusting you. So how do we do that? Absolutely. Great question. So the way in which we do it, number one, is to first recognize that there are two types of marketing, right? And it's very important to recognize these as they relate and pertain to communities and building your own. The first type of marketing is what we typically see from a lot of marketers out there, right? It's this thing called push marketing. It's, hey, hey guys, look at my phone, look at my cup, look at my, look at my new sunglasses, you should buy them. They're great. Let's let's wear it. You know, it's amazing out. It's like perfect for the sunny day. You need to wear these sunglasses everywhere. That kind of energy. Okay. How many of us have been in a community <laughs> where we that was a primary way of connecting with the community? How did we feel? Like what was the energy that oftentimes came? Or if you were in a community and you've done that before, I know I have. When I first started, I thought that's the only way to do it right? So I definitely had my fair share of doing it that way. And what I found was that it felt really empty. It felt empty being the one doing it because it wasn't really what I wanted to do, but I thought that's what I had to do. And then the other part of it was no one was responding. No one was engaging. There was like a lack of like actual like connection because that's exactly it. Communities are about connection. They're not about really like inviting someone to the core offer right away, you know? So when we're developing out our communities, the first thing I like to do is to introduce the other type of marketing. And this is really where it aligns for those of you who, who, who see yourselves as thought leaders or on the path to your thought leadership. And that is pull marketing. Pull marketing is more educational, educationally based. It's about giving value. It's about pursuing relationship. It's about pursuing relationship between, between them and you and you and them, right? Really getting to know your, your prospect to see if they are, uh, if you can be of service and in service to them. So in that, it's how do we, how do we utilize the content? How do we utilize the experience that we're crafting in there? The, and what I call culture elevation systems, which I don't know if we have enough time to go through that right now. <laughs> the cultural elevation systems are a way to really just help create culture and really help people feel like a part of an identity with your community um, and bring all of that in to your, to your build. So people want to invest their energy and time instead of feeling you're going to be pitching your product left and right and left and right. There will be time for that. There will be time to share, but it's done in a very different and a softer, if you will, approach to, um, to inviting people to check out your programs and products. Mm -hmm. We have a yeah. question from one of our attendees, Ricky. Uh, Ricky, who I haven't seen in a while, welcome. Um, he says, we have a community for spiritual seekers. The community follows the inspiration of teachers or gurus from the past and the facilitators who serve as role models, truly living the core values. The mm -hmm. intentionality really comes from authenticity for us. Thank you for sharing that, Ricky. It's really beautiful. Um, I guess more of a just sharing, really beautiful. Now, as I was listening to you, Marusha, the thing that really struck me, and again, you are a community architect, and so you've done this a few times, right? So... Yep. Um, do you have blueprints? Like, how do you get, how do you know how to do this? You know, yeah. like there must be some commonalities as you're building out a community. What are the types of communities out there that exist? Yeah. And, and how do you know, how do you build them? Yes, that's a great question. In fact, this has been the body of work that I have been digesting and, and investing my, a lot of my energy in over this last year. Um, I have built over a hundred communities. Um, most of them have been online. Um, my first, my first uh, 10 years of my career were all face-to-face -face communities, but then the last 12 have been primarily online and or hybrid communities um, of online face-to-face. -face. So 
when last year happened, i.e. COVID brought all of us into pandemic and we recognized that our, you know, all of us as a world were increasing in our anxiety and our depression and isolation. We all knew that we knew that we knew that our humanness was most important and the way to, to invite ourselves back to our fullest version of, of humanity was to really align with others. <laughs> so I actually, that actually made this massive shift for me in my own business to really say, you know what? enough with me doing the one-to-one -one builds. Let, let's actually get this body of work that I've been working on for 22 years to the masses, like to more people, because we need to know how to do this. So the way in which I've, I've aligned with that is to create these, what I call these five blueprints, these five profit paths to figuring out how to, how to basically support all of us to not have to wade through what works and what doesn't work, but to find a path that works for us based on the four V's, right? And also like what we want, how we want to show up with our, with our people um, in, its, in its totality. So um, there's a lot more, I can give you a ton more on this, but I'm just going to kind of go over the, I'm just going to touch over the, the five real quick. And then if you want more, we can definitely talk about that as well. But the five are, the first one is what I call an engaged community. And an engaged community is where you build a long-term relationship, you're engaging with them. Um, this particular group, right, uh, of spirit for spiritual seekers possibly could be an engaged community because it's a long-term relationship, helping them understand on a specific topic, uh, something that, that might be of interest to them. Right. And then on the back end of that, um, there might be opportunities for offers for other programs and services to support them in their journey. Right. But it is about building that know, like, and trust factor, that longer term relationship approach. And they always have a, a home base to come to. Your community always has a home base to come to when they, uh, they need a touch point on this, on their topic of, of your, on the topic of your choice. The next type of a group is what I call an endorse group. Um, it's very similar. An endorse group is very similar to an engaged group, but oftentimes it's dev devised and designed by somebody who may or may not have their own products and services, but they do have influence in the industry. So it, for a lot of folks who have maybe written, uh, written a book that has gone you know, to bestseller status, but they don't have like a coaching program on the back end or they don't have necessarily a, um, uh, a service or software that they provide, but they do have a lot to say on a specific topic, an endorsed community would be an aligned type of a community for them and partner with different brands to then have revenue streams coming in outside of their, let's say their book or their speaking, uh, their, their paid speaking opportunities, right? The third type of community would be what I call an excite community. An excite community is just that. It's exciting because here's why. The people in the community join for a very specific intention. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's to join a challenge that you're offering or something where they get a taste test of the work that you do. So these are great. I call them our small but mighty win type of a community. And that's why it's exciting because by the end of let's say five days, 14 days, whatnot, they get to experience something that gives them like a light bulb moment and says, oh my gosh, I need more of this. So that has its own style of energy and build, but then leads directly into programs and services on the back end that, that they're already invested in because they've had that small win already. And the fourth type of a build is called an educate or uh, yeah, an educate build. <laughs> These are really where you're partnering programs and services and software, uh, if you have a software company for, uh, for these are communities for your, for your current customers your pro and, and your clients that are already in your programs. So you want to develop those relationships within those communities. And then our final one is our evangelize build. Evangelize is the one where basically we invite all of our current clients and all of our, our colleagues that really love our work to be able to now come together and learn about new products on the market, new services that you're offering, um, new bodies of work that you're working on and get them involved ahead of time before it launches to the public so that they can experience it, maybe even share a testimonial or two, and um, can then be led into um, supporting you, maybe doing some promotions on your behalf or with, in partnership with you. So those would be our top five. And again, lots more where that comes from 
from. Um, but that's where what I definitely would love to encourage um, everybody who's currently creating a community or interested in it to align with how, how to do that, how to use one of those blueprints to then really take and skyrocket your business even further. So Bev is just asking, what if you have a bit of all of these communities in one? Is that a conflict? Ah, that's a great question. Thank you for asking, Bob. So what I find, it's not necessarily a conflict, but it oftentimes diminishes the return of your, of your community, right? So for example, um, I, have a, I have a client right now that we're working uh, with, and she wanted to have a, an engaged community, okay? So that's like the long-term relationship-based community, but then she wanted to do a challenge within that. Okay, and that's, that's on the surface, that seems okay right? Because you can add like a little fun challenge there and you can mix it in. So it's an excite community moving into a, an engage. What I found though, is that for those who, anyone who's ever done a challenge, while it's a small, but mighty win, and it looks like, oh, short-term community, long-term, you know, invest a long-term gain because you're bringing them more into a, a program faster. What often happens is they look at all the, the amount of work that you need to put in to do a challenge. And you're like, whoa, oh my gosh, that's a lot, right? <laughs> so when you build it into an engaged community, you're really just diminishing the potential of what you can do with an Excite community if it's, an, if it's its own experience. So as an Excite community, if it was on its own, I would then invite us into then turning that Excite community into an evergreen, meaning ongoing, consistent uh, community so that you do the hard work once and then you make it work for you again and again and again and again and you continue to bring people into your programs through a process where we in essence we evergreen that and they have a very strong intention as to why that community exists in the first place I hope that answers her question you know I think we could talk about this all day um, yes. but I certainly have a million more questions. There was one more question and I didn't want to leave without um, asking it. It came from one of our guests, Randy Vandersteren, who asked um, how you were able to accomplish such an amazing feat with the UN General Assembly with mm -hmm. Perky Perky Coffee. And I know yes. that's, you know, it's such an interesting um, thing that you were able to do. Maybe you could give us a quick answer because we're almost out of time. No worries. So basically with, with Perky, I actually built this coffee brand as a mom of three. I was working full-time at the time. It started in 2016. And the way in which I built it was through community. In fact, I launched the brand uh, about six months after I started building community for the brand. Um, and so because of that and the ownership of that community started to like take on uh, because I was involving them in the whole process of developing out this coffee line with me, they, we ended up selling over a thousand bags our first month of, for, for this company in 2017. And so that inertia, the inertia of that, it's like the boom, right. And, and just kind of like some back little tiny backstory is that the, I, I created Perky Perky as almost like a love letter, um, to women, um, as a way for us to remind ourselves that we are enough. And because I lost myself in motherhood and I lost myself in this journey of trying to be a mom and an entrepreneur for quite some time. And so it was me reclaiming that back and reclaiming each day. So when I built that in as part of my mission and my vision for, and the values um, and voice um, of my, of my brand and of that community that I was building, it, it skyrocketed the sales on the back end of that. So that's just continued since 2017. And I love that we're a boutique, you know, little boutique um, uh, coffee, coffee firm. But what that's done is it's allowed us to get into spaces that um, haven't, haven't uh, really had a lot of women, -owned, women, like women owned voice in, i.e. the coffee world, for example. And because my community now is such a fervent community around our message and around our coffee, because everything is ethically sourced and small batch roasted. Um, they can't wait to tell people about it. So we just so happened to have our message align with somebody at the United Nations for Women's Entrepreneur Day. And they said, we need to have Marusha here. We need to have the, her coffee shared with, with all these influencers. And so there, there we go. That's how it kind of rolled out and has continued Power to serve. Community. The Power of community. community. Exactly. There you go, right? You, you never know who is in your community and how they can become your evangelist. Yes. Marisha, 
This has been an absolute joy. I know that you've got some, you can give some help to people. Is there yeah. something you would like to leave people with our guests here today that how they could access some of your, your, uh, your teaching and your learning? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, we just mentioned the five different profit paths. If that resonated with you and you're trying to figure out, okay, well, which one of those paths is really my path um, or the one that I should really focus on? Um, I encourage you to take our quiz and it's very simply at createcellimpact.com forward slash quiz. Super simple. <laughs> um, so createcellimpact.com forward slash quiz. And yeah, you'll learn more about each of those uh, builds, the different types of uh, blueprints that you could choose from, but you'll also learn the one based on your responses as to which one would be the most, the one that you would like, um, you might wanna start with. And if you, of course, you have any other questions, you can always reach out to me um, or join our, our Facebook community. Um, and I can, I can add that here in the chat if you'd like, but it's called Grow and Monetize Your Groups for Changemakers. Great. And we'll just make sure that both of those go into the show notes as well. So for if anyone's looking for them, when we post this on YouTube, you can put it, they, they, they'll be there for people to click on. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. And thank you to all of our guests. I know we went a little over, but the conversation was so good. I didn't want to cut it off. So um, thank you all for staying and join us next week for another sense-making conversation where we'll dig deep with, an, with our expert, Evan Carr. And he and I are gonna discuss systems thinking, the importance of uh, understanding complex questions and sense-making. I can't wait to see you then. And in the meantime, think about your community, think about your values, and think about your value and be intentional in how you choose to build. Thank you again, Marusha. It was an absolute pleasure. And thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.